Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Okay, so this is like my third time trying to film this video and I'm just gonna have to film it and say what I have to say. I start getting real emotional, which is okay. We know Peter gets emotional in videos. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I'm just gonna have to say what I have to say and get through this, okay? So, this is my unboxing of Kohei's and the Vloggerinos project of the Thousand Cranes, okay? I have the box right here. I have it all unboxed. It's sitting over there. I'm gonna show it to you guys in a second. Um, but I really wanted to talk to you first, and there's also some things that Kohei sent me, this journal and this book that I wanted to talk about. Um... So if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, after the accident happened uh, a year ago, Kohei, who is part of the Vloggerinos group that watches my vlog on a regular basis and whatnot, um, he started this project called The Thousand Cranes. And the project is based on um, the book, which I'm going to mispronounce this horribly, Sadaku and the Thousand Paper Cranes by Eleanor Carr, which I have I read years ago. And... Um, so if you don't know the story of the, the if you don't know the story of the uh, Thousand Cranes, I want to read this to you really quick because um, there's not really a good synopsis on the back of the book. So I looked it up. Hold on a second. After being diagnosed with leukemia from radiation caused by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, Sadaku's friends told her to fold origami paper cranes in hopes of making a thousand of them. She was inspired to do so by the Japanese legend that one who created a thousand origami cranes would be granted a wish. Her wish was simply to live through her disease so she could fulfill her dream of being on the running team. In this retelling of her story, she managed to fold only 644 cranes before she became too weak to fold any more and died in her sleep on the morning of October 25th, 1955, knowing her family will always be there. Her friends and family helped finish her dream by folding the rest of the cranes, which were buried with Sadako. Now, I have to tell you... Um, Kohei has documented his entire journey of making this project for me on his YouTube channel, which I will link below, okay? And when you watch the videos, Kohei shares little stories and tells certain things and does uh, a tutorial of how to fold the origami cranes, even... We'll get to that in just a second. So anyway, um... But one of the things that he shared in there that I was not aware of was that the, this is actually based on a true story and that in the true story, um, she did actually complete the Thousand Cranes, which I did not know. I was not aware of that. I actually think I saw a movie about this like years ago as well. So when I saw him start this project, I was like, oh, this is like really cool. Like, you know, this is, I didn't, what it ended up being and where it started, like I just, I, I could never have imagined. And I have to tell you, that, you know, I think, like, one of the greatest lessons I have learned in my life in the last few years, being on YouTube, whatnot, is that there is a lot of ugliness in the world. There's a lot of ugliness on social media. There is a lot of ugliness on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere else, you know? And we can come for people and we can be cutthroat. Or we can join forces and become friends. And some of the greatest friends that I have ever made in my life, I have met online. And I feel that um, I have had just, I have been shown just absolutely, the absolute beauty and kindness in the last few years with people sending me letters and sending me handmade things and sending me store-bought things and just thinking of me and the fav my favorite coffee and, you know, making me a bookmark and on and on and on, you know, and it's just like out of the kindness of their hearts. And one of the, my favorite things is that people share stories with me of their life and they write me handwritten letters and or emails and they'll say, hey, this is what's going on with me and, you know, you've inspired this or thank you for this and whatever. And it's the interconnectivity, I think, of life that has um, really, like, helped me. See, I don't know, maybe the beauty and the, kind of the, the kindness of strangers. And that being said, I have to say, I have never had a gesture like this in my entire life. This is probably, and I've had a lot of them in my life. I, I feel very blessed to say that I've had a lot of really beautiful, kind, compassionate gestures. This is hands down the most beautiful gesture that anybody has ever done for me. And I am just absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. And it's sitting over there, like I said, I'm going to show it to you guys in just a second. Um, before I get into that though, I want to share something with you which I don't believe that I've ever shared in a vlog ever before. 
And um, it's something that I actually haven't shared with Koei. I wanted to share it on the video when I unbox this. Um, and I'll probably get real emotional telling the story because um, when I talk about interconnectivity and meaning to things and, you know, I don't know, presence of spirit and whatnot, I've been thinking a lot about my mom lately, you know? And I don't really know why i think it's because like this is the 15 years since she's passed away and <laughs> i was sitting on my front porch thinking about it and i thought to myself you know 15 years is a long time for somebody to be to be gone you know it's like uh but i don't know that that guttural pain you know inside that doesn't sit with me every day but i think it, it comes and goes sometimes and i miss my mom i miss her a lot and um Small pieces of my mom's life had a huge effect on me. I don't think this is a story that I've ever shared in my vlog. I think I've shared bits and pieces of it, but I don't think I've ever shared this specific piece. And I wanted to share this on here because I think it's just so fitting and kind of bizarre in this whole story of the Thousand Cranes. So um, before I was born, well, when I was born in uh, Chicago, and um, but at that time, my parents lived in Evanston, Illinois, um, home of Northwestern University. My dad did his medical residency at Northwestern University. He's a retired surgeon. And at that time, my mom worked at Northwestern Library. And the area that she worked in was Asian literature. Um, my mom had like two or three favorite books that she would have like our bookshelves as I was growing up. She would have like Irish literature and Southern literature and Asian literature and whatnot. And two or three of her favorite books she always had, you know, like segmented in this area. And one of her favorite books was a book and it was called Thousand Cranes um, by Yusinora Kawabata. And um, when I saw that Kohei was doing this project, like I immediately thought of my mom. And, um, this book has nothing to do with paper cranes. It actually is about tea. It's about five, I think it's five short stories. And I've read it and it had absolutely no effect on me. My mom always wanted me to read this book so I read it like when I was in high school. It had no effect on me whatsoever. But it's about this tea that this guy attends and at this tea he sees this vase and on the vase there are these cranes and that's why the story is called Thousand Cranes. But, um, I thought of my mom like immediately with this whole project and I thought about like her spirit and just you know watching over me and that I am so blessed that I have all of these kind people out there thinking about me you know and what did I do to deserve that I, I did I don't know I don't know I don't know you know but really all I can say is thank you um I really appreciate it and um Koei said in one of his videos um, that I had said to him that like in like hard times in the last year that I would watch his videos of him and I have like you know and there's other vloggerinos that make videos and I watch their videos as well and it's it, it's cool to see that you know so um, all right let's get to this unboxing now that I have cried my eyes out and I'm gonna probably still cry my eyes out a little bit more so um, first of all, he sent me a copy of the book, which I'm so thankful for, so thank you for that. Um, the next thing that uh, Kohei sent me was this absolutely beautiful journal. I'm going to show it to you guys, okay? It's like, I, first of all, I said to tell him what is so interesting about this, okay? And I don't know if I've shared this, but for years, I would buy, like, boyfriends, my mom, things like that leather-bound journals, and then I would write things in them, and, like, with my mom. Like, I feel like my mom is, like, kind of, like, weirdly part of all of this. I don't even really know why. Um, my mom is somebody that, like, she loved store-bought gifts, don't get me wrong, but, like, a handwritten, you know, poem or a, 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 a painting or whatever meant so much more to her that she just would have been absolutely blown away by this. I mean, she would have been, like, Peter, like, this is like incredible. Like this is unbelievable, right? And Alex was the same way. Alex was like, I could just, do you even, like these people are so kind, Peter. Like, do you even, I mean, we were just all blown away by this, right? But through the years, what I would do is I would get leather bound journals and then I would write on a pa one page each, I would write a memory of something from our lives. And um, 
it was one of my mom's like favorite gifts I ever gave her was I just bought a journal from like Barnes and Noble and then like eat, I said these are my memories of you or this is our life and on each page I wrote a memory and um, I love leather bound journals and I, I love when people do something special with it and Kohei did something very very special with this and so when you go in here and you open the book it says a thousand cranes for Peter Mon by Kohei then you turn the page and it says and the vloggerinos and then he wrote me this sonnet and he said that I could uh, read it on video or just read it to myself but I think I'm gonna read it on the video a sonnet to Peter when you are hidden in your darkest days tears keep flowing and it's hard to swallow I hope to help you avert your gaze to feel a little less hollow if only for a moment may I keep you in a place where only sunshine and rainbows land. In a place where you forget all you've been through. Your very own pro perfect neverland. My gift to you, woven beams of my heart uh, alight. A thousand cranes perched colorfully and a few extra for each day. That you struggle to see the sunlight. Letting you know that it'll be okay. Love Kohei. I absolutely love that. And then he goes in there on his last video that he did, which I think there was like 43 videos in all on his playlist, um, which I'll link below, like I said. Um, he put on here, how are you feeling today, Peter? And then the date, so I can go in there and I can start journaling. And then at the very end of um, the journal, he, hold on a second, he put a um, one crane for the man that died in the accident. <laughs> And then he thanked, um, credited all the vloggeritos that helped. So I want to say a special thank you to, um, Tessie, Trish, Katrina, Debbie, Megan, Nicole, Tracy, Kristen, um, Catherine, I think I'm mispronouncing her name, I'm sorry, Kelly, and Emily, and, um, and then he put the crane letters in there as well. And each of the cranes has like a letter on it. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about the last year um, and updates and things like that. And uh, I thought a lot about putting another video out. I did, I think my first video back in May was when I talked a lot about stuff that I said in that video out of consideration for the other families involved that um, I didn't really want to speak to that again. I didn't think it was fair to them, which um, I still hold to that. I don't really know, like, you know, I've done like medical updates and stuff like that on my vlog, but um, uh, I don't really know. When is a, a fair or right time to uh, start talking about all that? So, um, I don't know. Down the road. At some point, I probably will. Um, but I've, uh, it's something I've talked to my therapist about at length. And, um, you know, being sensitive to everybody involved. So, um... But I really haven't, like, I've gotten a lot of questions from people saying, like, you know, you haven't said this, you haven't said that, and whatever. And that's the reason why, is out of sensitivity to everybody involved and the families involved. And, um... So, I just want to say, um... Thank you for this project, Kohei, and, um, the Vloggerinos. Uh, just, it's been unbelievable to see this all go down now i will tell you we don't have a lot of places to hang stuff in our house um so alex and i are trying to come up with like the perfect place to put this i will let you guys know as soon as we know where we're gonna put it um but for right now i have it over on um the chair i'm gonna stop the camera and i'm gonna come back and um i'm gonna see if i can find a place to hang it so that i can show it like all lit up um, and I will be back in just a second. Okay, I ran around the house trying to find the perfect place to hang this and show this, you guys, but 
Koei had told me that it is 12 pounds. Um, it literally feels like it's 30 pounds. <laughs> It is so beautifully manufactured, so I thought it would probably be best if I just showed it to you in the chair, but I want to turn off the lights, the ring light, because I want to show it to you um, with no lights on so you guys can see that he has put fiber optics, this entire thing. Um, it is all hung on this wood, okay, which is like beautifully done, and then at the top of this, there's this cord to hang it on okay it is so heavy you guys I don't even really know um, I'd like to push this back and show it to you guys like fully what it looks like it is unbelievable and he sent me the uh, the cord and everything to plug it in it is just un abs absolutely unbelievable I just I don't um, I, I can't believe I just, I'm blown away. And I will say this, Koei, like he said in his last video, he said, you know, that this project had helped him as much as he helped it, hoped it had helped me, which, um, it's just, it's, it's spectacular. It's just, it is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my entire life. And you can see down here, you can see the, um, I mean, I don't know if you guys can see this, um, but there's letters written on the origami, and then he has put underneath here, um, like it looks like little earring kind of things. I mean, it's just, the attention to detail is miraculous. It's so beautiful. I'm so blown away by it. And on the very bottom of it, you can see there's wood hanging from below, and he has it all rooted in this metal. I mean, this is the most unbelievable thing in the entire world. I'm so thankful for this, and um, and I love that it keeps on changing colors. <laughs> Maybe next year I won't get a Christmas tree, and I'll just put this up. <laughs> no. Um, Alex and I, I was like asking Alex, I was like, where do you think that we should put this? And he was like, well, let's move some art around in the, in the living room and then maybe we can hang this somewhere instead. So we're thinking about possibly doing that. One of the other things we thought about doing was maybe putting it behind our bed. Um, so uh, we're gonna have to figure out a wonderful place to put this. I don't think you guys will ever know how much this means to me. So thank you so much. I love you and um, I will see you in my next video. Bye.